In the last video, we um, designed and built um, this power supply here, uh, which works quite nicely. Uh, 32 volts and um, almost no recognizable ripple on here, and about 320 volts, no load. Um, with um, no, ro no ripple if no load, and about 250 volts, I think, with 100 milliamps of load. Um, and 100, 200, 300 millivolts of ripple, which is also quite, quite all right. Um, I don't mind that at all. So um, what we want to do now is um, design an amplifier. And normally you'd have to go into the data sheet and dig out some load lines, and do all sorts of stuff. <clears throat> but I mentioned in the intro that um, this was a tube that was very much used in early uh, television receivers. And there's a there's a quite a variety of schematics of television receivers out there that um, you can at least take inspiration of. Um, what you don't want to be inspired is um, using auto transformers to supply um, your anode through single wave rectification. But besides that, um, you can be inspired by this. So the power supply we basically completely redesigned. We have a, f a proper isolation transformer, full wave rectification, and much more than 50 microfarads of filtering. Um, but um, we have an output transformer. We'll have an output transformer that's about 4.5 um, k of impedance, and um, I think. Having an additional filtering stage for um, the acceleration grid, grid 2 here of the pentode section is also a good idea. 50 uh, microfarad sounds fine. And then they're also using that um, as the anode voltage for the triode. Um, and we'll have to see how that sounds. Um, and if that doesn't if that gives us a lot of distortion, we'll have to put an additional filtering stage in here. But um, I don't really expect it. What we'll definitely change is we'll have more than 200, uh, 20 nanofarads here. I'm thinking more of a microfarad as a coupling cap. Um, the grid stopper of 10 kilo ohms here is um, quite important because um, these combination valves um, or, or vacuum tubes um, um, it's very easy to induce uh, them to, to oscillate at RF frequencies and they're fairly unstable so um, that's probably a good idea 470 um, kilo ohms of um, grid pull down resistor also sounds fine uh, 330 ohms um, we'll just have to take their word for it. We could also draw a load line and see if that, but that should work out fine. The 25 microfarad here, I'll just uh, make a little larger, mostly because we have um, much more reliable, much smaller um, electrolytics of larger capacity now, um, so it doesn't hurt putting it in. Also, we don't need to pinch pennies um, really on this, although I don't want to be, I, I want this to be a, an amplifier that. Um, is under, let's say, 30, 40 euros, uh, complete with everything. So it's really a budget amplifier, but it should still sound nice. So it um, doesn't hurt to put a larger capacitor in there. Um, if you look at the biasing scheme for the triad section, you see, wait a minute, shouldn't there be a resistor here for um, normal automatic grid biasing? Um, if you would use grid biasing, yes, but um, this is called um, grid leak biasing. And it's a technique that is um, famously used, I think, at the Mullet Free Free. Um, and it sounds very, very nice there. Um, and they use it to here, which basically what happens is, because this resistance is incredibly large here and it's connected to nothing else, electrons from the cathode that's just normally grounded, will uh, fly out and strike this grid here and they'll stay on this grid and charge it negatively by about half a volt, they say here. Um, and that will give you 
um, your biasing voltage. And this works very nice. Um, I think one of the reasons why they did it in this television, television receiver is um, you save a, a, a bit of money because you have two components less. And um, then also, you can get much higher gain um, this way. Um, so this is something that we could definitely try, and I think it should work out nicely. Um, here, again, same as with this resistor, I'll put a much larger capacitor in here. And because I read online that someone built that circuit, and um, these this tone control pot didn't really work well. Um, I will probably also delete that. And if I want, also because I want to, this to be a little more compact. Um, so um, if I should want a tone control stage, I'll probably design a proper co tone control stage and put it um, before that. But this uh, sounds a little, well. Um, so we'll just stick with the volume pot. So let's see how that looks um, if we translate it to an actual schematic. So this is um, the schematic of what I designed in. And you can see it's very, very similar. Um, it just lost the tone control here and it changed a couple of values like this coupling caps and um, this. And then instead of having the uh, output transformer drawn on here. I'll just have two pins um, because this is how I'm going to connect the output transformer and um, filament. The filaments, um, interestingly enough, they have these isolated here, um, but I'll supply them from my power supply from the line. So um, this is the schematic. I think it's uh, high time we put this on a board and see actually how it works. So here's the test board, and as you can see, this is one se section. This is quite compact for a vacuum tube amplifier. This is really not all that large. Um, I'm quite impressed with that. Um, a couple of things I learned from building this prototype. First of all, um, this resistor here, 330 ohms, is this resistor here, 330 ohms. Even old schematic gives you no indication of what wattage that resistor should be. You should listen to your gut um, because um, I thought, yeah, this should probably be a 2 watt resistor. Um, 2 to 5 watts would be fine. So I put a 2 in there and that works fine. Um, if you had instead put a, a, a 1 watt or a half watt in there, it would have surely burned up because this gets quite hot. And it's not ideal that it's right next to the capacitor. So for the final board, I'll probably move, move this capacitor down here because I have some space here. This is only occupied by this hole um, so that we don't cook this capacitor. Um, these are the rather large coupling caps that are also quite overrated in voltage. But um, yeah, okay. Uh, this is compact enough for, for my needs. Um, this 2.2K up here, um, is pretty happy, it does get warm a little bit, but it's fine. And then the um, rather important thing I learned um, from designing this is you should check your clearance settings um, in your in your CAD program because um, I had all my clearances like this, which is pretty large. It's, I think, 32 mil. Um, it's not large enough for... Um, the uh, high tension that's coming in here. This is the um, lead for the output transformer. And especially if this um, starts oscillating or whatever, if you're feeding in a 20 kilohertz tone, um, you'll not only have 300 volts on here, but you'd also have it um, at 20 kilohertz and um, that made this entire track here burn up and um, it got it got quite nasty so I dremeled it all out and put a wire in there instead. So for the final version of this board um, I'll have to um, give this a lot more clearance than I have 
and also probably increase the clearance on all of this um, by to, to about double that, just to be on the safe side. Um, this resistor sticking up here is just a replacement for the volume control pot um, here, here, because um, else this will start oscillating like crazy. So you definitely have to have um, a resistor here or a volume control pot. Uh, as you can see, the layer on this other side for the second channel is a little different. A little different. Um, I haven't tested this yet, um, but this actually, and we'll test this in a second. Um, this sounds quite nice, so um, I'll probably try this different design, um, but I don't think it, it can be much superior. Um, this has a little more space, so um, all the things have a little more separation. Um, we'll see. But yeah, I'm quite happy with this, and I think um, I'll fiddle with this prototype a little more. And once I'm uh, certain that this will work, um, I'll just put the two boards, um, probably put them together like um, this, make some Gerbers, and, well, it's put them together, whatever, and um, get this professionally manufactured, because boards these days, they can't, don't cost much. But um, prototyping boards like this is a great help because um, you actually see that your clearance settings are wrong um, before you get um, boards manufactured. So um, let's put this in our little stand here. And I'll connect all the wires up, um, which will take a little while, so I do it off camera. So, okay, I've got this all set up and I'll turn it off for um, um, the time that I'm explaining. And yeah, I will have to fix that. But um, so there's a Bluetooth module down here, which is feeding audio into this input. It's the amplifier. I've got an output transformer here, little speaker power transformer here, power supply here, and then I also have this second tube here just to balance the power supply out. Um, and I think what we do now is we'll just switch this on. And then I'll feed in some audio from the YouTube audio library. And you can see this sounds quite quite nice actually. It's perfectly fine for the shitty speaker that I've connected, and the not quite ideal output transformer, and all the dangling wires and stuff. And I mean, I can turn this out, and yeah, it's it's quite good. I don't mind this at all. Um, so. Turn this off again. And um, yeah, so this works fine. I haven't done any measurements on the um, THD or, or things like that. Um, but um, I expect this to um, be, well, probably under 10%. Um, but it's also not going to be under 1%. Yeah. It's going to be okay. Um, so I may, I might do some measurements on this. I uh, might not. And then I think I'll put these... Uh, I'll uh, put the revisions on the design. Like um, and the space is capacitor differently. And uh, have the clearance different. And... Then I'll think um, I send this out um, to be manufactured and um, then we'll do the last part of the video. Um, fitting it all in a case we'll do once the boards have arrived in two to three weeks. So yeah, see you then.